All right, so you want to make your character hairy. But look, I get it, it's hard. But did you know that in Blender 3.5, they actually added hair presets? So to get started in Blender, you can actually just use Quick Fur to kind of give you a quick start. So if you select the object you want to add hair to and you go ahead and click Quick Fur, what it's going to do is just add a bunch of geometry nodes, node setups. And all of these come from the asset browser over here. It's just kind of giving you a preset list to get started with. Now, essentially, you can just go ahead and begin stacking these onto your character, and you can just set the factor here. And by changing this factor here, you can just kind of casually add any of these presets and go ahead and adjust the factor. But you're probably gonna wanna know some of the deeper settings so that you can go ahead and create a more interesting result. So let's dive into some of the main settings here that you'll be seeing across all of these modifiers. After that, it doesn't take very long. As I said in the thumbnail, it only took me about five minutes. It's gonna take us a tiny bit longer because I'm gonna go through and explain the process, but let's look at how we can do this. First things first is understanding what set hair curve profile is. If we go ahead and turn off all of our stacks here, you can see that what this is doing is going ahead and setting the hair curve profile. Now all of these others, when they add hair or adjust that hair, will be looking at these hair curves in the beginning of the stack. Lastly here, we have a surface to form. If you plan to add an armature, make sure it is above the surface to form or shape keys. That way you can ensure that your hair will follow the surface as it deforms. Now some reoccurring fields that you will notice in between all of these are things like factor, distance, and shape. So what factor does is literally kind of like an opacity filter. So you can see if I turn this on here, it is a noise pattern. And by turning that all the way down, it will adjust the noise. So this is kind of like a percentage. Next up is shape, and that determines where it will occur along the curve. So if we look here at how the noise is affecting our shape, we can see that 0.5 by the default, it is affecting all along that curve. And we go ahead and turn that up to one. You can see how that is changing the shape and where it appears on the curve. And if we go to negative five, you can see that it inverts the noise so that it appears at the tip first instead. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that to default for now. Lastly, the other setting you should be aware of is this little toggle over here. By clicking this, we will open up this field and then we can choose where we want to select. For example, we can choose the hair here and that will make it so that it only affects things on our hair vertex group. So knowing those controls, you can go ahead and follow along and let's look at how we can create some interesting hair quickly. Now, if you click away and you're not entirely sure where your modifiers are, they are under the curves object, which will have been added and parented to your object when you use the quick fur. So make sure you have that selected so that you can see the modifiers. So we're just gonna move down in order here. So set hair curve profile is going to set the hair curves on our mesh. And we can go ahead and adjust the radius there and it will change the shape. Now, if you're not able to see that, then what you need to do is go to your render settings under here, go to curves and in the viewport display, change that from strand to strip and that will allow you to see the radius effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're going to create that monster hair that I showed you in the beginning. So if you wanna follow along with me, we're gonna go ahead here and we're going to create 00 0.3. That's going to give us just a slightly thicker hair. Now here we have the factor minimum and maximum, which will affect how this curve shapes. See that? So I'm gonna go ahead and set mine to 0.75 because I don't want quite such a thick base. Perfect. So first up, what I'm going to do is turn off all the modifiers here so that we're in just our set hair curve profile. And what you can do is tap here into sculpt mode. And if you want, you can comb this. I'm just gonna go ahead and just comb some of these so that this just hangs a bit further down so that it clings to our monster a bit more. Perfect. Now what we can do is go ahead and we can turn on the interpolate hair curves node. And then what this will do is go ahead and add a bunch of hair. Now, what we wanna do is go ahead and adjust the density here. So we have various settings here, surface rest position, follow surface normal. See so if you check this off, it won't follow the normal. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that on. And you'll notice here that it's using the UV map. So whatever object you're using needs to have a UV map so that you can use these geometry node curves. Perfect. Now what we're going to do is change the density. Now you basically want to set this as high as you can without crashing your scene. And down here you have a viewport amount which will scale how much you have. So you can set a high number here and set a low number here and that way you won't crash your system. So I'm going to go ahead and do something really high like 100,000. 
And you can see that's giving me a ton of hair. Now I don't want this lagging while doing the tutorial. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this to 0.1. And that should allow me to move around the scene more as it's only showing about 10,000 particles. Now here we have a density mask. So what we can do with that density mask is determine where our hair is by clicking here and selecting a vertex group, we can trim out hair in areas. I've gone ahead and preemptively created one. What you can do is go ahead, create a new vertex group here, name it whatever you want, and then tab into vertex paint mode or weight paint mode, and then you can begin painting hair on and off. I'll go ahead, turn my curve off there, and you can kind of smooth that out. What I recommend doing is using the subtract brush here, and then when you're done, going up here to weights and smooth, and you can use this to blur out your weight paint and get you a more gradual transition. Perfect. Now what we're going to do is begin editing the rest here. So next up, let's go ahead and add another asset. So if you come up here and search for trim, you can find the trim hair curve there. We'll go ahead and you'll see that that's gonna make everything look a bit wacky. So we're gonna change a few of these settings here. I'm gonna go ahead, click scale uniform. And for a length factor, I'm gonna go ahead and do 0.25. And then I'm going to turn off replace length. I wanted to use the length that I already have. Perfect. So now you can see that that is starting to kind of shorten all my hair everywhere. And what we're going to do is use this to determine where we want hair to be shorter. So what you can do is grab that hair vertex group and you can go ahead here, click this down arrow, and then you can copy that vertex group, tab into weight paint mode there. And then what you can do is come up here to weights. You can click invert. And what that will do is that everywhere that we removed the hair, we can also set this as a length modifier. So I'm gonna go ahead and blur this just a bit more. And then after that, we can use it in our length. So coming back over here to the curves profile, what we can do is grab that mask there. And I'm gonna go ahead and use my length one. And you can see that now it is shortening the hair wherever that vertex group is selected. So we're still getting hairs around here. They're just a bit shorter. Great, next up, let's take a look at this hair curves noise node. So what this is going to do is just add noise to our hair overall, but we can adjust how it does that. So here we have the factor, if we wanna just turn that up and down, and we can also adjust the distance, well, uh, overall distance factor for just the deformation. So I'm gonna go ahead, set mine to something smaller, like 0 0.005, and you can see that that's already getting me a bit better results. I'm going to leave the shape at 0.5. I'm gonna change the scale to three. That will scale the noise up so that we get a smaller noise pattern overall. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and keep that. If you like, you can do preserve curve here, but I like that it gives me a bit of randomness. Next up, let's take a look at adding another modifier. So we'll go ahead, we're gonna add a curl hair modifier to this little character here. We're gonna move that up here and adjust some of those settings. By default, you can see it gives us a pretty wacky result. So first thing I'm gonna do is turn down the guide distance to 0.02 and then I'm going to turn the guide mask down to 0.25. Now, if you're wondering what that does, I need to turn off existing guide map so you can see here, this will disable whichever guide curves that it's using up here as reference. So essentially by turning the guide mask up and down, you're telling it to use less of these curves when determining which hairs to curl. So I'm gonna go ahead, set that to 0.25, turn all these back on so that you can see what we're doing. We're gonna go ahead and play with a few more of these settings down here. So let's set the radius to something smaller. You can see here that the curls are quite large at 0.1 meters. So let's go 0.02. And you can see already that's getting a more realistic result. For the factor in, let's go ahead and set that to 0.25. And you can see that now it is not affecting the ends of the hair as much. I want these to be a little bit tighter curls, so I'm going to set a frequency of four, and you can see that now we're starting to get a little more curls there. And then with the random offset, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this up by 0.5, just to create a bit more randomness overall. Great, so we're getting a bit of curls in here, but I don't want it to completely dominate my hair, and that's where the factor comes in useful. So let's go ahead and turn this down to 0.5, which is essentially saying about 50% strength, and you can see already we're getting much more desirable results. Great, now as a monster, we want to kind of have his hair clump up and be a bit more animal-like. So we're actually going to search over here for a clump hair curves. We can go ahead, drag that onto our character there, and we'll go ahead and bump that up above the curl hair. Hair. And then we can go ahead and play with some of the settings here. So I'm going to set this guide distance to 0.005. 
and you can see that that begins to adjust it a bit, but we need to turn off existing guide map so we can see the effects fully there. And then I don't want it to clump all the hair, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this down to 0 0.025, which will make it kind of clump various options there. Great, now what we're going to do is play with these other settings here. So I wanna spread out the tip just a tiny bit so we can do tip spread 0 0.002. Perfect, and you can see how that's starting to create just a little bit of frizz at the end. Great, now what we can do is play with the frizz hair curve modifier. So turn that on, you can see it's gonna make everything frizzy and kind of destroy a lot of the shape that we just created. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the distance right here to a much smaller number. Let's do 0 0.005, which we've kind of been doing throughout. And you can see already how that's giving us a much more natural result. Lastly, right now it's adding all the frizz to the end of the hair, and I'd like it to start at the beginning of the hair a bit more. So let's go ahead and do negative 0.5, just invert that. And sorry, I misspoke there. That is going to add the frizz at the base of the hair by inverting that. So we're kind of keeping our kind of clumpy hair all together. Perfect, now let's go ahead and add a bit of length to this. So what we're going to do is add another trim hair curves, grab that, we'll just drag that on over here. And you can see it's gonna make everything a bit wild. We're gonna check on scale uniform. And for the length factor, we're going to set this to two. We're gonna turn off replace length, and there we go. You can see we're getting a much better result already. Perfect, now I'm gonna go ahead and turn the random offset to 0.1, and you can see that that is getting us a little bit more of a desirable result as it looks a little bit more random. So lastly, let's go ahead, add a rotate hair curve, and you can see that that's just giving us a tiny bit more random there. You can go ahead and play those settings if you want. In this case, I think the default settings are okay. The problem, with geometry nodes is it's incredibly fast. We can adjust all these settings super quickly, super easily. However, the problem is that it doesn't work with animation. It'll follow your character, but it doesn't have dynamic properties. So what I like to do to remedy that is I go to the object and I add a particle system. I'm gonna go ahead here, grab a particle system that I already made and turn off these curves so you can see. And what I've done is I've just added a hair and added a kink system with interpolated children. And what that does is just give me a bunch of kind of random little hairs. And then what I can do is turn on hair dynamics here. So the hair will follow our character, but by having kind of some longer strands of hair and stuff move around during the animation, you can kind of create the illusion that the hair overall is dynamic and just add a bit of motion there. Hopefully kind of tricking the user into not realizing that the hair isn't moving entirely dynamically. Now, if you'd like to know how I created this material, I actually have a video entirely on how to do that, which I will link here at the end of the video.